In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We keep today the feast of St. Thomas Aquinas, Doctor of the Church. And as always, we begin by acknowledging our sins and asking our Lord for his mercy and forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who providently gave St. Thomas to your church as a herald of your wisdom and a pattern of her holy life, grant us through his merits and example that we may always seek you in truth and love you above all else. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Therefore I prayed, and understanding was given me. I called upon God, and the Spirit of Wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepters and thrones, and I accounted wealth as nothing in comparison with her. Neither did I liken to her any priceless gem, because all gold is but a little sand in her sight, and silver will be accounted as clay before her. I loved her more than health and beauty, and I chose to have her rather than light, because her radiance never ceases. May God grant that I speak with judgment and have thoughts worthy of what I have received, for he is the guide even of wisdom, 
and the corrector of the wise. For both we and our words are in his hand, as are all understanding and skill in crafts. The word of the Lord. The mouth of the just man uh, utters wisdom. The mouth of the just man uh, utters wisdom. If you trust in the Lord and do good, then you will live in the land and be secure. If you find your delight in the Lord, he will grant your heart's desire. The mouth of the just man uh, utters wisdom. Commit your life to the Lord. Trust in him and he will help, so that your justice breaks forth like the light, your cause like the noonday sun. The mouth of the just man uh, utters wisdom. The just man's mouth utters wisdom, and his lips speak what is right. The Lord of his God is in his heart. His steps shall be safe from stumbling. The mouth of the just man Ah, utters wisdom. Alleluia. Ah, alleluia. Alleluia. Your word, O Lord, is true. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Truly, truly, I say to you, if you ask anything of the Father, he will give it to you in my name. Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said this to you in figures. The hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in figures, but tell you plainly of the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came from the Father. I came from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I am leaving the world and going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Thomas Aquinas was born in 1226. He went as a boy to Monte Cassino and as a student to Naples, where he joined the still quite new Dominican friars. After studying under Albert the Great, Thomas spent two three-year terms as Master of Theology in Paris. He died in 1274 while setting up a study house in Naples. It's amazing how much he produced in a relatively short working life, including commentaries on scripture, treatises on a wide range of subjects, and his summer of theology, a first degree course in theology for people who know some philosophy. He could write poetry. Between his two terms in Paris, 
He was at Orvieto, where the papal court resided, and there he composed the office for Corpus Christi, weaving scriptural texts into a rich tapestry. His hymns remind us how the Eucharist brings home to us the Son of God, who in friendship came into the world and became one of our family and gave himself to die for us and before leaving the world and going to the Father he left us his friends this wondrous way of being with us on our journey. Most of what St. Thomas wrote was lapidary prose. One reason for his immense influence is its clarity and the sureness of his judgments. Another is the masterly way he drew together scripture, the fathers of East and West, the church's decrees, Jewish and Muslim thought, and philosophical traditions. In particular, Aristotle's account of the complex human psyche helped him explore how God's grace, so to speak, takes flesh in the complex fabric of the human material. St. Thomas's thought has been likened to a medieval cathedral, probably meaning one like Salisbury, built in one go, symmetrical, complete, and watertight. But we should picture a more complex structure, still in progress of being built. For Thomas revised and fine-tuned his ideas, more than many have recognized, as he kept engaging with scripture. While writing his summer, he was still working out on the hoof how the Holy Spirit guides God's friends personally through his gifts. To develop the metaphor, the cathedral rests on foundations. Thomas was profoundly aware how the whole cosmos and each thing in it, all causal relationships and all activities are held in being all the time by God, who does not treat creatures like puppets, but gives them their being, their powers, their beauty, and leads them gently towards their goals. It's a mystical vision of God's presence in all things. And the cathedral has no ceiling or roof. It's open to the sky. The God who supports our being is also the goal who draws us upwards. We are created in God's image and for God because each of Father, Son and Spirit wants to give himself to us in friendship to be known and loved, possessed and enjoyed, now and forever. As Thomas's journey of faith went on, he became more keenly aware of how none of the things we understand in this world give us concepts and analogies for grasping fully or domesticating the greatest mysteries of faith. While we are on pilgrimage, the scriptures and the sacraments feed us. Grace enlarges our hearts so that we already embrace God as our friend. But when we are raised to our home in God, then Jesus' promise will be fulfilled. The hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in figures but tell you plainly of the Father. For then, in our home, the wisdom who feeds us now 
will strengthen our minds so that we truly live by the clear vision of his Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. In your mercy, O Lord, deliver your people from the pestilence that presently afflicts them. To those who are sick, grant health in mind and body. To those who are in fear or in isolation, grant peace of mind and the consolation of your Holy Spirit. For those who care for the sick and all who are in danger, grant your protection and courage. Welcome those who have died into your eternal rest. Console those who grieve. And as by your grace we work to establish your kingdom, grant that we may be a sign of hope for the world. Through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously accept these offerings, most merciful God, which we joyfully present to you on the solemnity of St. Thomas, and make of us an offering acceptable to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and with unbounded praise to bless you on the feast of Saint Thomas, whom you graciously honoured with the more brilliant light of divine knowledge, as he devoted himself 
to prayer and study. For he put the darkness of error to flight with the truth of doctrine. And like a shining sun splendid in his teaching and manner of life, he wondrously illumined the church. And so with the choirs of angels and the multitude of saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with our holy father Dominic, our holy brother Thomas, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. But by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Through Christ the Teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast day of blessed Thomas they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.